Welcome back, everybody, to the OTP channel. My name is AZ Axel. I am the tech support for Out of the Park Developments. And um, we've been just browsing through some memes that I found online last night. I may have been browsing through the, uh, the OTP Reddit forum and stumbled across some of these little glorious little gems. Some that are actually ranging all the way back to, like, OTP 15 and, and, uh, and earlier. So some of these are, you know... Um, a little old in the uh, in the realm of out of the park development, but I thought they'd be funny to be able to kick off our stream with at least some some uh, <laughs> some stuff that uh, yeah hits a little bit too close to home for some of those. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, none are original. I mean, to be honest, you don't really have to have the original ones in all regards. Um, some of the old memes still still ring true and uh not a lot of people are going to get the otp references so that's not a problem but anywho welcome everybody welcome back to the otp channel my name is again it's alex uh, alex marie tech support for out of the park developments i'm sorry about last week i had to take the week off we got absolutely flooded with uh tech support requests and tickets and everything else and i just i coming into friday night last week i looked at what I had to do for the next stream, and I just did not have any time at all to be able to get anything prepared for this for this uh, next episode, which is 103, which we are entitling uh, Settings, Settings, and, and More Settings, um, because that is literally what we're going to be doing, is talking about all of the different types of settings and tabs and menus that you're going to have to work through when you're creating custom leagues. So if you don't remember what happened in our last two streams, and I think this is I think this is technically 103. Is this is this actually 104? Oh, now I'm gonna make myself look this up. Because now I don't remember if this is 103 or 104. And I don't have it in the episode title yet either, so I probably had better change that just in case. I think this is I'm going to assume this is 103, but something's telling me I've already done 103. Okay, it is 103? Okay, good. You know it's not good when the teacher himself is also, you know, second-guessing how many weeks we've been going on this class. Um, so, yeah, this should be 103. In fact, let me add that really fast. Episode 6, which is class 103. There we go. There's the usual Alex pause in the middle of the intro, fixing something before we get started. Okay, so yes, episode uh, episode six, also known as Class 103, is going to be taking us through the um, through the guts of the machine. That is what we're going to be going through today. We're going to be going through all of the different uh, tabs that you get when you go into advanced mode when you create a league. We're going to talk about what those tabs can do. Um, some of the features that you can get uh, and be able to utilize in your leagues, and then uh, we'll be answering any questions you guys have. I hope that you guys had time to be able to do some of the homework we had that was scheduled two weeks ago. That was the design your own custom league. It can be as extravagant as you'd like it uh, to be, or it can be as simple as you want it to be, but just uh, being able to get your first league created and be able to see that in action would be really, really cool. That was your guys' homework. I hope some of you decided to go ahead and take me up on that homework offer and actually made a league for yourself. I know some people play OTP just for the uh, perfect team mode, but the single-player mode uh, is just really, really good. And if you just get into it, it can become such a nice feature to have in your arsenal, being able to understand not only the game, but also being able to do... Um, <laughs> <laughs> Majin forgot. Oh, dear. He trashed it three times and completed it. Yes! There you go. See, that's how you do it. Um, no worries, Majin. I know you're streaming, so you have you have excuses. You have, you're working full-time. <laughs> There's a single-player mode? <laughs> what? What is this? What is this? What is this single-player mode you speaketh about? Uh, so, yeah, let's go ahead and jump right into it then at this point. So... Last week, or two weeks ago, sorry, last episode, we talked about um, creating leagues, kind of just the basics of creating leagues in terms of what process you're going to go through um, with your 
uh, just the league creation wizard, pretty much. And then we kind of skipped through some of the tabs here on the right. Um, we kind of just talked about the teams and then the league. That was kind of what we talked about. So we really covered league and teams, those two tabs we talked about. And then we didn't really talk a little... We I think we talked a little bit about, like, we breezed through the rules, we breezed through the financials tab... I took that off because I wasn't going to do it, but I'm going to talk about it today. And then I think we breezed through stuff, and I was just I just made some changes, and that was literally it. So today, today, we're going to go through everything. All of these tabs, we're going to talk about what each and every single setting does, why it's important, why it's in the game, and why it might be important to you and what areas to think about for each setting in terms of, you know, what is the, you know, minimum, maximum for each setting? Why would you change it to be one way or another way? And how would that impact your league? So hopefully you guys are going to have fun. Today is going to be unfortunately very dry because it's basically just going to be us talking about every single setting, every section, kind of what it does. I may demonstrate a few of those just to be able to show them off but we are going to be having a lot of me just talking and um, not a whole lot out there. Uh, financials absolutely could be a class of their own. Um, there's probably going to be a second class for financials down the road that's going to cover um, stadiums, ticket prices, player prices, balancing your, your finances. We're just going to talk about the different options you have here. We'll talk about how best to manage and set up your finances down the road. Now, technically, all you really need to know, because we're basically going to just do the general information about financials, because basically this average profit needs to average out to about $5 million at least. Um, that's what I've always assumed should be the average amount from what I've been able to discover. So if it's not that, fix that. Um, otherwise, you're good to go. Um, if, if it's too high, though, you, gotta have, you, gotta, you can have problems there, too. But that's kind of what I've always discovered is that that's a pretty easy one to be able to generalize. But then we will have a more in-depth financials class. That'll be in probably the 200 or 300 series classes. So that's down the road. Um, we'll be probably starting a game and then starting up the 200 classes, and we'll be covering all of that information in the 200 classes, what to do when your league has started, maintaining your league, making sure it's working correctly, and then demonstrating leagues live. That will be our uh, hands-on work, which is going to be the 200 series for classes. And then when we get into like the really extreme stuff, which is going to be... Oh gosh, I have to research on that on this too. But I'm gonna cover stuff like almanacking. Um, I'm gonna try to see if we can do an online league class. I have to get up to speed on that really quickly though, so I know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, not that I don't know what I'm talking about. I know the general gist. I understand the general settings, but I have never um, mastered that part of OTP. So that's something that I need to do. Um, but for today, guys, it's just gonna be the tabs. So let me go ahead and review chat, uh, make sure that people are up to speed on stuff and no one's asking questions that I haven't heard of or haven't been able to answer yet. So if you've got questions, please feel free to shoot them my way. I'd be more than happy um, to be able to answer any and all questions you guys have as I technically am the tech support. So that's literally what they pay me to do is answer your guys' questions. Uh, let's see. So DJ says he's going to start up a league really soon. Very cool. Very cool can only build the team through rule five and drafts. Ooh, um, are you gonna think about turning off trading, Dijo? Is that what you're gonna be doing at that point? Uh, turning off uh, all the trade settings? Cause you technically can do that. Um, you technically can go into, I believe it's options. Um, and you can actually turn off trading. Um, maybe it's not an option, maybe it's someplace else. I know it's in one of the settings areas. We'll probably be covering it in a couple minutes here. Maybe it's rules? Is it rules? I think it's rules. Yes, rules, player trades. You can actually turn off player trades and make it so that way it's only the rule five draft and the uh, and the amateur first year player draft that you can get players from. Uh, although you'd have to turn off uh, free agency or something else like that to be able to go around that as well, but that's, that's kind of iffy. So 
Yeah, trades can happen, just not for you. Oh, okay, cool. So you're going to have a personal restriction. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Going to trade all salaries and vets for prospects to start. Very nice. I like that idea. Let me see. Gamba had something. I guess uh, I did add an independent league to my long-running save, but I screwed up MLB uh, 2 by scheduling the expansion draft for 2025. Ooh. Uh, it's now the 2039 season. <laughs> you got around it by going into the league calendar and for scheduling an expansion draft. Uh, that's good. Yeah, at least you got that fixed, Gamba. Uh, that's it's still the notification for the 2025 expansion draft is still there and it isn't going away. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, um, unfortunately, if uh, if you do something, so if you do set up something in the uh, events section. And uh, it's not it's incorrect. Sometimes those can be a little bit tough to get rid of because they still are like pending. Um, and unfortunately, there's no really good way to get rid of those outside of um, I mean, you can go in and delete them. If you're in commissioner mode, you go to the event list, you can delete those. But um, sometimes they don't want to be deleted if they're actually still active. So I don't know if that would actually be uh, the fix to that. And Chaos Demon, as someone who bought this game only a week ago, it's insanely in-depth, and I love it. Awesome. That's great to hear, Chaos. This is one of those games where if you love baseball and you love statistics and you have four hours to kill, you're going to look up at the clock and it's going to be eight hours, and you're going to be at four in the morning wondering why you're sitting in front of your computer while everyone else is asleep and... Um, and your life will never be the same again. That's just what happens, unfortunately. And then your hair grows long, you get, you get facial hair growing out, and um, everyone wonders where you've been for the past couple of months, and you realize that you don't have a life anymore. Um, that's what this game does to you. <clears throat> the only 2019 things. Uh, yeah, I don't know if, uh, is it like still showing up on the, uh, on the league menu, like uh, expansion drafts, you know, having to go to the expansion draft event? <laughs> only eight hours <laughs> only eight hours that's true i've actually i think there was one time i actually played otp maybe i mean I, I took you know like meal breaks and you know bathroom breaks but i think i may have played otp straight for two days i'm i'm dead serious i was so i was not in a good place like three years ago not not like mentally not in a good place but i just didn't have any I, I was financially okay but i just my work was every so often so i had like weeks at a time where i had nothing to do so i filled it with the otp because i didn't have a social life so i'm much better now don't worry about that i'm much better now but there was a time where i would go maybe i would just you know be like ah, i don't feel like sleeping today so i would just go another 12 to 24 hours and just you know keep going so yeah. Now you know a little bit about <laughs> why I have so much experience and, and knowledge about this game. So this quarantine has been like a, an absolute perfect excuse to be able to say, oh, I just want to keep playing because, you know, I don't have anything else to do. There's, there's no alternative jobs out there. I, there's just, just, it's just me in the game now. I can make whatever I want. Uh, let's see. Lost it so many weeks without realizing it. Yeah, you lose so many weeks and months without realizing just how much you're playing. And then you look back at your hours on the game and you're just kind of like, oof, I, um, I need to go see the sun, whatever that's called. I think it's the sun, right? Yeah, the sun. I need to go see the sun. And then I've heard this rumor that there's something called the moon. Uh, whatever the heck that thing is. I, I gotta go see that next. Um, let me see. Let's, let's see the other questions we have. Uh, I haven't done an OTP online league in years, even though it wasn't the normal kind where everyone sends exports. I'd have them post on a forum the stuff they'd want. Oh, that's a cool way of doing it, Magus. I had an online league with a friend of mine. I actually streamed it once, I think. Uh, a friend of mine named Jesse Friedman. We, we did a Rockies versus d backs stream because he's a d backs diehard. And I used to be a d backs diehard, and I'm just a d backs fan. But I'm a Rockies diehard. So we had us do a fantasy draft for those two teams. And um, I think I was winning. Let's just say I, I think I was winning that. So, so let's see what it is. Uh, Nicolin, sorry about that. Uh, you're late to the party. No, you're perfectly on time. Today's topic is going to be settings. Um, uh, settings and, um, oh, yeah, it's more settings. We're going to be running through all of these tabs besides, of course, leagues and teams. We're going to be talking about the settings tab, the rules tab, the financials tab, the options tab, the players tab, and the stats and AIs tab. 
Uh, we may even jump over to a historical league to talk about the historicals tab, uh, just so that people who want to do historical leagues know what that's all about. All right, any other questions at all? Baseball, numbers nerd. Oh, awesome, Chaos. Nice. You just enjoy watching the simulated games. I mean, yeah, when there's no baseball right now, you got to watch something. you got to be able to play something. So, yeah, yeah. What's the sun? Is it edible? Uh, I mean, I've heard you can have Sunny D, but uh, I don't know exactly what that's. Uh, I don't even know what that is, unfortunately, anymore. That was like a 1990s, 2000s craze was the Sunny D juice. I don't even know if it was really juice. That was more like artificial flavored water. So not too much to go over then. No, no, it's just like the actual machine and the guts of the machine and every single setting and everything that makes the game work. I mean, we're just going to go over basically everything as quickly as possible. So let's not even mince any more time, guys, because we're already wasting so much as it is. Let's get started. So we're first going to talk about the settings tab on the left, go into really in-depth detail about what the settings tab is because this is what's going to be your global game settings. So if you've already started your game, and you've already hit start game, and it's launched, and you're on the team screen, you would go to game, which is unfortunately grayed out right now, and then go to game settings, and it would bring up this tab right here, which is basically, it would be in a different type of window, but it would be your game settings, which is also known as your global settings, and you'd be able to change any of these options on that screen. So let's run over all these options. And we'll see, is there a level above very high detailed call spore level? <laughs> um, in regards to what, Dijo? Tutorials or player evaluations? I mean, is there like, uh, are you talking about like 100% accurate? Or are you talking about, because technically, technically, there is a way to get even more than very high. Oh, the stats detail. Um, regretfully, there is not. Um, regretfully, there is not. I would love to see a world in which OOTP just ends up tracking every single detail. But unfortunately, those are the four options that you get. Um, and, and we'll talk about that in a second here, guys, when we get over to the stats and AI, which is actually going to be our last thing. But, um, but we'll get to that as well. Uh, I've got a question regarding player generation for my fictional world league. Is it possible to make it so non-USA players don't have colleges or high schools based in the United States? Um, yes, you can make it so that way any of the feeder leagues you have have uh, restrictions. And we'll actually talk about that um, in today's stream, uh, Mamba. So you're, you're at the right place at the right time. We'll be talking about that. That's what you can find underneath of your rules section. So that'll be the first tab we talk about after we're done with settings. Uh, we're going to talk about foreign players on active roster limits, uh, what that means for uh, your rosters and for international people. So you can absolutely streamline your league so that way every single league has one nationality and they only can be that nationality and potentially a second nationality. As long as they have one nationality of the first and second that they have for a player, they can they can join that league. That's actually one of the really cool things you can do with custom leagues is you can make them so that way there are international, not borders, but restrictions, which can be really, really cool. Do individual pitch ratings play any role in the sim? Um, in regards to how good a pitcher is? Because... Yes, technically. Um, technically, we've already discovered that... Um, I mean, we already had an entire stream about does a pitcher need to have three pitches to be able to be a good enough starter? Um, but at the same time, yes. I individual pitch ratings do play a role in sims because those end up going into your pitcher's stuff rating. Um, and that's extremely important in how well they will dominate most batters. I don't know if the game individually will say, oh, this is, you know, a five-star pitcher, but he has one bad pitch, so whenever he throws that one bad pitch, it's going to get hit to the moon and back. I, I don't know if the game goes that far. Um, I'd have to ask a developer about that. How, how detailed does the game go for actual individual pitch by pitch does it change the rating of the pitch depending upon what is thrown um i would have to ask about that i've always assumed that yes 
if you could go back and look at a pitcher's pitch stats by individual pitch, you would notice that they get hit better off of a bad pitch versus a good pitch. So I think the answer is yes, but I'd have to ask the devs about that because um, I don't know if they just take the overall stuff rating and just call that the better example. Because technically, if you go to a pitcher's profile page, you will notice that the splits don't have all of the pitch individual pitches uh, in split configurations versus batters. It only has stuff. So it may be that they just simply show you what the stuff makes in terms of this, you know, uh, the individual individual pitches make for your stuff rating. Uh, it may be that it just simply is a way for them to show off what the pitcher throws and how good he throws it. But then the ratings for the stuff is more important. That's what the game uses to simulate. So I don't know the answer to that. Um, yes, the split ratings will change depending upon the individual pitches. Um, and also depending upon, well, that's actually dependent more upon the split that the pitcher has. Uh, but that is something that, uh, that you can, that you can work on. I believe, I think there are a couple different ways you can af affect that. Uh, did I miss multiple leagues sharing an inaugural draft? No, you have not DA. I will be covering that shortly here as well. Uh, that's actually another question someone else had asked about, uh, leagues having players from other, uh, nationalities that shouldn't be in that league joining uh, high school and college systems and, you know, messing up the uh, international, uh, I wouldn't call it division, but the international restrictions that are happening to a league. So we'll cover that in a second. Um, we'll be getting into that uh, in the rules section. So back to, <laughs> back to the game really fast. We'll keep going. Uh, so settings, again, these are global settings on the left. This is what you find if you go to game and game settings. And this is the first one that you see. And this is going to be all about your scouting settings. This stuff applies to every single aspect of your league and your game. So not just the one league that you're working on, which is the right side of the screen, because we can change this and go to, you know, the America's League and then a AAA League, and these are all changing for that. But these settings will remain true for every single league, every single um, tournament, anything you add to the game. These will be applied to anything you add. So these are global settings compared to league settings. So we, of course, we have our, our different scouting accuracies. Everyone probably already knows all about these. You've got from very low to very high and then 100% accurate. Now, a lot of people would probably don't... Well, there is one thing to know about this. If you want to do 100% accurate, that's fine. If you're really going to do that and you want to be able to see the actual ratings of the players, all you literally have to do is just turn the entire scouting system off. That's going to be much, much easier. It instantly makes everything 100%. You can be able to figure out exactly what people are, what their ratings are. If you're trying to just play a league where you know exactly what everybody's ratings are and you don't have to guess that they're 100% or, you know, have... Uh, have stuff like uh, the incorporated stats or any of this stuff affecting it, just turn the complete scouting system off, and that will give you the most clear, bare-bones ratings approach you can possibly get in the game. So if you're just trying to do it so you can just see what happens, if you're playing like a replay league or you're trying to do something to test stuff out, just turn the scouting system completely off. You don't need to have it turned on. That's more for like um, fog of war effects and for being able to play the game and have fun while you're, you know, finding players, developing players, and guessing how good people are. So I found that uh, high is probably good for new beginner players. Uh, normal is probably going to be great for average to even veteran players. And then if you really want to challenge guys, if you want to be challenged by OOTP, go to very low. I'm dead serious. I'm absolutely serious. Try it out once and see how much of a curveball very low scouting accuracy does for you because it is the biggest handicap you can get in the game is not being able to know exactly how good your players are or maybe over guessing how good a player is because your scouts having a hard time being accurate this just compounds the issue when you have a bad scout as well so if you want a real challenge go with very low yeah how does that overall scouting accuracy interact with the skill rating of your scout? Um, it it does. Um, how does this accuracy affecting affect the AI? Unfortunately, Mamba, it will not affect the AI. 
the AI does not use scouting as far as I'm aware. Um, the AI uses a pre-programmed coding system to be able to make sure that they don't have to do a whole bunch of coding for every single scout that's on every single AI team. Um, it would it would take way I'm I'm assuming it would take way too much processing power for the game to have however many teams you've got have to do their own scouting and manage all of their decision making based on the randomness that each scout would de develop. Um, in terms of how does this overall scouting accuracy interact with the skills rating of your scout, um, I'm assuming it's a compounding, um, some kind of a, you know, uh, some kind of a, I'm gonna assume it's some kind of a timesing effect on your scout's accuracy. So I would assume they probably do something similar to like 0 .0, uh, 0.5 would be like very low, 0.75 would be low, 1.0 accuracy would be normal, so it would be you know default accuracy, and then 1.25 would be high, 1.5 would be very high, if you understand what I'm trying to say by that. I think it basically just takes away accuracy in percentages or chunks as you go down in accuracy. So to be able to counter that, you'd have to get a really good scout to be able to get past the very low accuracy to basically get back to even just normal uh, at that point. So it will, it will stress you out a lot. It will basically make you have to work harder to get better ratings. So unlike me and Rich, who are having a pretty decent time finding people to trade for, and, and we haven't really done a whole bunch of the handicap stuff to to make us, you know, well, not handicap stuff, the, the, the restrictive stuff to make it harder on us. We actually have gotten it off pretty easily because we're using pretty relaxed rules on our, on our playthrough, which is more designed for like a new person who's just gotten started. That's what the red machine is for. Uh, the rich machine, sorry, is for, is for basically showing off how to kind of jump into a league and get started. So right below your scouting accuracy, of course, is going to be your scouting report updates. This is how often your scout's going to give you updates. You can see that in our Rich's machine as well. We get this kind of like a player development report every so often. If you've played the game, you, you've already seen these before as well. Um, basically, the scout's... Excuse me. Ooh. Basically, your scout's going to give you an email every so often, <clears throat> which can be either monthly, bi-monthly, or at the season's start and end. And this player development report is basically going to be an update about every single player in your organization. He'll highlight the most important ones in the email, but every single player gets updated. And any changes that happen to players in terms of being uh, given better ratings or worse ratings are going to be reflective in that player development report. So this setting will let you be able to change how often your scout gives you an update. So I think for us, I think ours is set to bi-monthly. It might be set to monthly. If you want to be able to see more of the progression of players and be able to have more of a hand on the pulse of your team, go with monthly. If you don't really care and you would f prefer to you know, just uh, set up your team at the beginning of the season and then just simulate through the entire season and get to the end of the season, maybe just do the season start and end. That way you don't have more emails popping up in your email box about, hey, you have an important message to read, and then you're just going to be clicking on OK and continuing simming. One less thing they have to worry about, um, because most likely than not, if you're just simulating the season, you're not going to be stopping unless it's for, like, the trade deadline to make one or two deals, and then you're just going to zip through the rest of your entire simulation. So, yeah. And yes, Majum, it would be pretty awful uh, just to have random stars and everybody is just kind of all over the place. Um, but then you don't know, especially if you get into like the fictional player leagues where you really don't know how people are, suddenly their statistics mean so much more than their stats, oh, sorry, than their, uh, than their overall ratings or even their ratings. Because at that point, the stats have to back up the ratings. For a lot of players, OTP is all about getting the best, you know, rated players, and then they they wonder why the statistics don't back it up. But that's because the scouting accuracy is normal, and they're not as good as they thought they were, or they're having an off year, and the statistics aren't showing it. But then you have these people, you know, who are like, oh yeah, I had a you know a, a really good rated prospect coming out of you know out of uh, college, and he had you know bad years in the minors and he lost all of his ratings. Well, that's because the statistics are what's going to drive 
all of the ratings. Sometimes not so much. Sometimes it's dependent upon you know the matchups they have and and whether or not they're um, just you know in a slump or not. But sometimes looking at the statistics does have an impact. Um, yes, exactly. Just you do have to look at the statistics and take that into consideration. Uh, do current year stats affect scouting updates? Um, you can allow it to. That is actually something that we have incorporated into OTP 21. So great segue there, Matrum. Well, well done. I'll give you your money later. Um, you can actually have the statistics incorporated into your scouting reports now. That's actually the last option on this list. So if you want to be able to have the statistics of players um, affect their ratings. Now, this isn't, this isn't the same thing as this down here this player evaluation ai settings is different than incorporating stats into your scouting reports okay so basically what the incorporate stats into scouting reports is going to do is it's going to take any statistics of that season and it's going to basically affect how the scout believes the player is doing at that moment because most of the time the ratings are not going to change depending upon statistics. The ratings of your player, not the overall, the ratings of your players are going to change depending upon the development of the player. That requires your coaching staff, your development budget, and your development uh, player development, uh, uh, basically your, your staff. It's mostly just your staff and your budget. And then the randomness of OTP, giving them better ratings or not. But now, if you change this incorporate stats to yes, you can actually have the statistics of that season affect, directly affect the, the scouting reports of that year. Because down below, this player evaluation AI settings, which you think could be you know current year stats, weight, this is just for the overall. This is just for your overall rating. This is probably, I don't, I don't think it's going to affect, because yeah, because ratings weight is right there. So I'm correct. This is just going to affect your overall because we already have ratings weight right there. So this isn't going to change your ratings. It's going to change your overall only. So if you want your overalls, <laughs> sounds like I'm saying the clothing now, uh, but if you want the overall of your players and the potentials to be dependent upon your current year's statistics alone, that can make for some very fun leagues when somebody has a Casey Kochman kind of season and becomes one of the most coveted players in baseball, only to have absolutely no previous history of being a, a great baseball player. Not that he wasn't a great baseball player. He was a good baseball player. But he wasn't a star until that one season. You know, there are a lot of players who got hot right before the, spring, uh, before the trading deadline, and teams wanted them because they were doing well. But then after that season, they never, ever hit that same level of effect again. So if you want to have something similar to that, put this up really, really high. So we'll talk about that later. I'm sorry, I'm jumping way too far down the list right now. But yes, yes, you can have your statistics incorporated into your scouting reports officially now. So we've talked about how often you can have those scouting reports happen. Um, this is going to be two parts of your uh, archive slash file storage situation. You can choose how often you want to keep those reports if you want to keep just the latest one, keep all of them or keep no reports. Um, this basically means that you're not going to see any of those bar graphs uh, when you go into a player's um, development. If you go to their like uh, scouting tab, I believe is what it is, uh, you'll be able to see their development charts of how well they're performing and they'll go up and down as they go throughout their career. Um, if you say no, you won't get any reports. You're just going to see what their actual last well it's gonna be their last scouting report but it's not gonna have any of the report information it's just gonna be the ratings so you're not gonna see any of the information about what the ratings mean or what the scout thinks about the player it's just gonna be numbers which you can find on their main page anyways um, I almost always keep all of the reports because I love seeing those graphs I love being able to see all of the ups and downs and I love to be able to go back and read all of the scouting reports and be able to say, ah, this is the one period of time where he had some trouble and didn't do so well. And then the uh, scouts were harping on him saying he's going to be a triple A player for the rest of his career. And then, uh, you know, he proved them wrong, got back up to the majors. And now they're saying he's Babe Ruth. Who'd have thunk it? You know, Mike Trout style. You know, this kid's not going to be a major league baseball player. He could be a decent triple A player. 
Mike Trout proved them all wrong. You know, he got the weight, got the muscle, and now he's one of the best players in baseball, maybe of all time. So, yes, you can also do that for the OSA reports as well. Your head scout's one of them. OSA, OSA reports are the other one. You can choose to keep all of them, none of them, or just the last one that they've done. Also, you can also choose to either keep the reports of retired players, if you're good at, um, at uh, going back in time and looking up your historical players and seeing how well they developed over time and whether or not they had Mike Trout-esque reports at the beginning of their careers, you can keep all of them or you can choose to delete them. And to answer your question, Matron, that jumps right into my next little section, yes, they will take up a little bit of memory to keep all of those reports. As you generate reports, they go into, let me see if I can find out really quickly where those go just for the exact location on your computer. They should be popping up into your documents inside of that save game folder. Um, it's probably part of the, um, if I can remember correctly where those would go, that probably would be news. I'm assuming it's news and then probably like reports or it's something else. It might actually, actually it might go into your uh, players.dat file. Um, I've never actually looked up where these actual reports go for players, um, but I know that they do end up taking up a little bit of storage space. So you do need to be careful with that, just so that way you don't have problems with that. Um, although that being the case, they aren't the largest thing that's going to make your save game blow up into large sizes, okay? That's not going to be what destroys your league. What destroys your league is going to be having thousands of players, thousands of face gens, you know, hundreds to if not thousands of baseball cards to load up. If you're doing almanacs, that's going to develop a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, there's a whole lot of other ways you can get more, um, more file size than you want to very, very quickly. Uh, question real fast from Chaos. How much data in gigabytes would your average player use in playing OTP21? Um, or can you provide a range from casual to standard to hardcore usage? So the default like MLB league starts out, let me see if I can find one real faster. I have one right here. So the average MLB start, if you just hit standard game and you start a standard game, the size of that league is 350 megabytes or so. So if you're gonna be doing more than one league, you're gonna be looking at at least a gigabyte by your third league. If you simulate a season of that league, there's probably going to be about another 100 to 200 megabytes of data written. Because if you're saving everything, and we talked about this last time we did a stream, but um, if you're having your settings set to uh, keeping all of your career left and right splits, that's more files right there. If you're keeping your career fielding set, that's more files right there. You're keeping your career postseason stats, same thing. Lots of files right there. Um, you have all these autosave and log settings, which are basically, we talked about this last week, so I'll breeze over these really fast because we talked about it on the last stream. But all of these incorporate some kind of file creation in your folder. So basically anything that's automatically generated or created from scratch when you play a game, when you simulate a season, um, and... Um, and, and almost all of these settings are designed to allow you to have direct control over what your game writes in way of files and how much you're going to be creating in terms of data. Because if you have all of these turned on and you have a pretty large sized league, um, it can get upwards of a gigabyte to a to two gigabytes, depending upon the size of your league. For example, I think I showed it off last time. I have a... Uh, a world baseball league that has 560 teams. I think it has like 60,000 players. Um, it is massive, 3.41 gigabytes. And that's, I believe, for about 10 years of simulated time. Um, and that's a pretty big league. And that also has a very large uh, development league. It takes about two minutes to simulate a day. No, 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 it takes about 60 seconds to simulate a day. It takes a while, though. So just for reference sake, and Gamba, there you go. Magus has another example that's a similar one into that. That's about uh, 20 years into a development develop right there, and that's uh, three and a half gigabytes strong and, and counting. So depending upon what you save, you can knock this number down. 
technically you don't have to save everything this league saves everything so if you turn these all off you can drop this number down a lot and uh and you won't have problems but then again if you're playing any other game right now any other modern game right now i mean we all know about the whole entire modern warfare what was it 40 or 50 gigabyte update patch they released so the size of games really isn't going to matter as much you can also technically get an external hard drive or a secondary internal hard drive and you can run that to be able to play the game i do that personally i i try to keep as many of my save games um actually on a secondary solid state hard drive so it's it's separated from my rest of my computer so it won't crash hopefully it won't have any problems um and i have them all backed up that way but it's also because i work for otp so i need that kind of backup potential okay anywho so that's good i'm glad we talked about that that was a good question uh let's see anyone else have any questions at all i'm up around 700 gigabytes of my uh, one terabyte hard drive yep mm-hmm a separate hard drive for OTP Oak Lonely. That's living. Uh, I mean, it's 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 small. It's my original uh, operating system hard drive that I formatted after I got a new one. So, you know, technically, I had a solid state. I got a bigger one. And then I just made the secondary solid state turn into an OTP drive because I needed that speed. Yes, I am the tech support, uh, technical support member for Out of the Park Developments. So if you have any questions at all, I'm probably the person that you're going to get, you know, rodeo into to talk to. So, yeah, yeah. This game is like the ocean. No one has ever really seen the bottom depths. Of each. Actually, DJ, I have seen the bottom depths. I have seen the bottom depths of a league that had 300 years of simulated time. And I'm guessing that if it, I had gotten all of the files, because I only got the .dat files, which is just the the default files that run the game. I didn't get any of the reports. I didn't get any of this stuff. Um, I'm guessing that league was probably upwards of probably 20 to 50 gigabytes, depending upon what he that, what that gentleman was saving. He had gotten to us in support because his league was crashing. Yes, less shock face. Um, but we actually got the league working because we were able to purge all of the deleted players and anything else that had been, you know, retired slash deleted and it, uh it made the league work again so he got a couple he probably got another 50 years out of the league but once you get to a certain point there actually is a limit for the memory of otp um <laughs> i have seen the bottom there's no color everything is white and they all look like aliens that is very true that's very true all right all right let's go back up to the top we have more stuff to cover and not a lot of time to do it in uh We've already been live for almost an hour. Okay. <clears throat> Anywho, player rating scales. We're going to be jumping all over today, guys. I'm sorry about that. Uh, of course, everyone knows the player rating scales. If you don't, this is what they can basically look like. This is what uh, you're going to see when you go to a player's profile page. You can either see no ratings, and then it's all about their statistics. That's basically the completely blind playthrough. Um, one to five is really hard. Basically, they're, they're, they're from really hard to very easy. Uh, one to five is very hard because that means that Mike Trout might be a five in home run power, but you might also have Mike Moustakis as a five in home run power, and Joey Gallo would be a five in home run power, but also at the same time, somebody maybe like a Nomar Mazzara might be a five because he's not a four, because four is, you know, made barely above average. So when you start to compress the rating numbers or the range of the ratings, it becomes harder and harder to understand how good a player actually is because suddenly there's a lot of fives and then there's a lot of fours and maybe there's a lot of twos and threes as well. And there's probably a good amount of ones, but not really that much ones. But most people will use at default 20 to 80. That is what officially MLB uses. So MLB uses 20 to 80. Some people like to use 1 to 100. I do, personally. That's if I'm trying to have fun. If I'm trying to have fun, I'll use 1 to 100. If I want to have pain and suffering and a really bad time, I will use 2 to 8 or 1 to 5. So if I'm feeling really bad about myself, I will use... I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Uh, 1 to 5 is just very, very hard. As Musha probably found out, um, it's very, very hard. Uh, 20 to 80 is, is, is perfectly fun. Oh, yeah. 
Oh yeah, 2080 is fine. That's that is default standard. Um, 20 to 80 is is good. That's what MLB scouts use. I, I would say it's fun. Uh, one to five and two to eight. Those are the ones that are not so much fun. Uh, basically, two to eight is what scouts used to use um, in the old days. I think some still use that, but they just added another number to the end to make it easier to kind of discern between, say, somebody who's a 71 versus someone who's an 80. Because otherwise, you know, if you have someone who's a 75, that might get up to an 8 versus being a 75 compared to a person who's an 80 who actually is more like an 84. So there's just less opportunity to understand what 2 to 8 means, what 1 to 5 means. Once you get up to like 1 to 20, 1 to 20 is pretty, pretty, it's, it's, it's okay. You can get away with it. But yeah, if you want to have some, some, some in quotation marks fun, uh, try like 1 to 10. See how you fare with that. Uh, you can do that, of course, for any of these three different ratings. That's their current ratings, their potential ratings, and their other ratings. Now, this does not affect the overall ratings, okay? Just so everybody understands, these are not your overall ratings. These are just the individual ratings. This is going to be contact, gap power, power, avoid Ks, I. Speed is going to be other ratings, I believe. Fielding is going to be other ratings, unless those are the personality ratings, which they may be personality ratings. No, no, not personality. That'd be something else. Um, doesn't officially only go up by, by fives in the 2080s. Uh, the 20 to 80s on the current ratings, the potential ratings, are 20 to 80 increments of one. What you guys are asking about is the overall ratings in terms of having the values go up at increments of five. Um, that's right. Anything that doesn't have a potential rating is an other rating. That's right. Thank you, IROC. That's right. That's right. So what you guys are thinking of for the, um, for the incremental fives is that basically the overall rating and the talent rating, which is, I be believe that's the potential rating. I don't know why they changed that labeling. Talent rating. Okay. That got changed, and I didn't even notice that until just now. Um, this is going to be your overall rating and how it's displayed. So you can do stars, which is what a lot of people start with. They'll do stars. Uh, why doesn't fielding have a potential rating? Uh, but fielding, fielding is more so a familiarity rating. It's going to be whether or not a player has the uh, fielding statistics to be able to play a position. I wish there was a way that you could have, like, fielding ability have potentials, but then it's really hard to judge how well someone would do at a different position if they could improve at a position without actually seeing it be done in person. Um, you just, you're not going to see a whole lot of players do the Cattell Marte or even the D Gordon effect where they suddenly go from second base. Well, actually we've seen a lot of people go from second base to center field. Technically shortstops have been converted from shortstop to center field and back and forth for a long time, but that's normally because they'll have good arm, regardless and OTP has done a really good job of making sure that if it's a shortstop they probably have good arm regardless in the outfield um so we've tried to make sure that if it's a person who has really good arm like for example Manny Machado if you remember playing PT20 Manny Machado was not a great third baseman but boy could that guy play the outfield Manny Machado had amazing outfield ability in PT20 I had him play left field and right field more often than I had him play third base or shortstop because his arm was better than some of the outfielders I had, and his outfield fielding and air was just fine. It was a little bit above average. So OTP has tried to make sure that all of the infielders, like Trevor Story, um, uh, I think even technically Nolan Arenado has got good outfield arm. Uh, if they have good infield arm, we've tried to make sure they have good outfield arms. So if you try to convert them to a different position, they at least have a you know a chance to be able to play that position. And then if there's any any records or statistics about a player playing in a different position, like Jeff McNeil is a perfect example. Thank you, Hyde One Cooch, for that. That's that's a perfect example of a player who's been played almost everywhere. We try to make sure they have at least some ratings involved for that position. And we'll talk a little bit more about uh, player fielding ratings down the road because we actually probably will do 
some kind of an episode about the player editor ta ed editor tab. That'll probably be a class three or a class two. Uh, and to hit what Merrifield, that's right. That's true. That's true. Uh, also think speed should have more of an impact on range. Um, actually, technically, we've already considered that, and speed is more so... Um, oh, there's, there's a difference. We've actually... Um, I know the devs have actually openly discussed that before on like a forum post or something. Uh, there was some kind of a post where they actually went into depth or into deep, into detail, deep detail about um, what speed is used for and um, why we have fielding range as a separate category that doesn't actually affect speed or isn't isn't directly affected by speed. And I think it's because they looked at some uh, outfielders like Adam Jones and some other outfielders who were really not that speedy but had amazing range because they knew how to take good first steps. They had good outfield instincts, and that wasn't going to translate well if you had it all based on speed. So exactly, Hyde. It's, it, it has a, there's a lot to do with your first step and your reaction. As an outfielder, I know that because I played outfield for years. I had a lot of speed. I didn't have good first instincts, but I could make up with it with good speed. Um, but, you know, that reaction and that first step is so important. Um, you, can, you can make up for a whole bunch of, uh, of that at that point. I, bel I don't, uh, like, I want to say it has some kind of an impact regardless of the fielding range, um, but I don't think, I, I don't think they actually show that in the game. I don't know if maybe that goes into effect. Maybe there's, uh, you know, a fielding range, and then that gets composited with a little bit of the speed to make the f total fielding range. I I'm not sure. I'd have to look it up. I'd have to see what they say about that. Um, but from what I understood, they, they wanted to keep it separated because there were certain, certain people who, would, um, who were taking the speed of a player and it wasn't quite making sense why they weren't good in the outfield or why they were really good in the outfield, uh, depending upon that, that reaction to it. Uh, let's see, any other questions at all before I move on? I think that's it. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Yeah, that's good. So you can also have the ratings be higher than the maximum. This is something else we just talked about before we move on to our next section, which is going to be coaching staff and face gens and then player injuries and fatigue settings. We'll run through most of those because those are kind of just dry, bare-bones stuff. Um, but basically, if you ever wanted to show someone performing better than their expected performance, so if you have someone like Casey Kochman playing really well for you, and let me bring up... Let me bring up Casey's, because I'm going to keep bringing him up as an example, and you guys are going to be like, what? <laughs> Who is this guy talking about a Casey Kotsman back from 2008? So Casey Kotsman had a really good... Um, he had a... <sighs> it really even wasn't that great. It was just that he was somehow really, really valuable for a short period of time in 2000 and, uh, 2008. When he was playing for the Angels, he was batting 287. He had 12 home runs. He was expected to have a new all-time high in home runs for that season. Um, and he did. He actually had a very good year. But he got traded from the Angels to the Atlanta Braves. And I don't even remember who they traded for him. Um, I know they did... Uh, who was it? I know they traded somebody... Oh, that's right. That was the Mark Teixeira deal. Um, so they ended up trading Mark Teixeira for, um, for Kochman and Steven Merrick. And, um, Mark Teixeira, of course, goes on to be a pretty big person down the road, later down the road. Um, his defense was great. Yeah, he had a great year that year. Yeah, he was really good. Um, but basically, if you have an example like that in your league where somebody comes out of nowhere and starts hitting lights out and starts doing a really good job, and he hits his maximum ratings, but he's really better than his maximum ratings, you can change it so that way people can go over their maximum ratings. So if you have somebody overperforming, it will show that overperformance in the ratings if you turn this on to yes. So just so you guys are aware of what that does. 
Because I know a lot of people don't know what show ratings greater than max is supposed to be used for, but that's what you use it for. You use it for people who are better than their performance is currently in terms of their ratings, and it'll show it that way for you guys to be able to see that. Now, let's talk a little bit about all-player ratings and the overall ratings. These are two different things that a lot of people have questions about. The first one is all player ratings are displayed relative to the current selected league or currently selected league. This is vital. If you're going to have more than one league or if you're going to have minor leagues, this is super vital to be able to see what a player's ratings are relative to the current league they are in. So if you have an international league and a major league and you go to your international league and you still have your displayed ratings relative to the major leagues, everybody in that international league is going to be two stars or below. Everyone's going to be really bad. If you change the displayed, uh, the, 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 the selected league that you're basing those ratings off of and to the international league, suddenly you're going to see a bunch of fours, maybe a couple of five stars, a bunch of threes, maybe a couple twos and a couple ones because it's going to lower what the displayed relative ratings are to the selected league that you're trying to look at. And that's what's going to be very important if you have multiple tiers of leagues or different types of leagues. Make sure you're aware of that. Make sure you know how to be able to use that. And then the last one for player rating scales is going to be the overall rating based on all players, not positions. And yes, Musha, you can also do that if you want to see if a prospect is more of a yeah, quad A player or if he's really good, you can base it off of triple A, double A, minors, you know, and then see just how good. One of the best ways to be able to actually use that displayed relative setting is go to your rookie system, change it to rookie, and see how many of those half star players are still half star and get rid of those. Everybody else who's like suddenly turned into a four or a five star prospect or even a three star, keep those. But anybody who even at the rookie system is considered a half a star, get rid of them. They're never going to turn into anything because they wouldn't even make it to double A before they would be absolutely trounced by anybody in double A because those double A players would be five star prospects in the rookie system. So that's a cool little tip for you guys to be able to use right there. So. The overall rating based on all players, not positions. This is a good way to be able... It doesn't cause problems going back and forth. Um, no, because basically what you're doing is you're just looking at the players in a certain level. As long as you don't go to your major league and try to view them based on you know the rookie system league level, because everyone would be five stars at that point. Even you know your worst major league player is going to be a five star. Um, but as long as you're just looking at the levels that the players are playing in, you can you can even go up and down a little bit. You can go to your rookie level tier and then make it be saying like double A or triple A and see if anybody is you know considerably good for a triple A or double A league. But that's just a way for you to be able to see how well each person would be rated at every single step of the way up to the majors. So if you draft a like our prospect we just drafted, who was, oh gosh, and I have to remember his name now, Ben Brooks in our Riches Reds, uh, Riches machine. Um, he would probably be a five star rookie ball player, five star, you know, short A, single A, double A, he might be like four and a half stars, and then triple A, he's probably gonna be probably three and a half stars, which is, I think, is the same level as his majors. Um, so you can always, you know, kind of, you can gauge how well they would perform at every single step of the way by changing that relative uh, displayed relative ratings option to show what they would look like at every single other uh, every single step in every single league. It's a good way to be able to get people out of your system when they all have the same rating. But if you go down to their level on that displayed relative rating system, it shows that they all have different you know projected uh, potentials. That's good to know. Uh, why always expectations start on negative budgets? Um, for your financials tab, in terms of uh, in terms of the uh, in terms of the majors, I know that there are some there are some settings that uh, you might need to effectively change if you're doing a custom game. You will want to look into your financials tab, and we'll talk about that in a couple minutes here, at Battle. Uh, because we're going to be covering that 
probably I might take a quick little like five minute break in a couple minutes here, get some water, and then come back and we'll talk about these other tabs because we still have a lot to go through. But your financials tab has a couple different things you can do to change that negative budgets issue. Um, if you're having issues where you make a you make a you make a custom league, uh, you've made it, you set it up, and then you start it, and everybody has negative budgets, it's probably because it did something kind of like this. Um, it took some kind of a default setting and then either changes that you made to the league or changes that happened to the league uh, skewed those financial settings a little bit and you might need to change them back. So you can always just simply reset them back and then if that doesn't work, you can always select a year and try to be able to do that and that will most likely change your issue as well. So we'll talk about that a little bit later though because we'll get into some more details about that. We'll run through some basic settings on the financials tab and then we'll, uh, no, only to expansion teams. Uh, for expansion teams, that might be a problem where the draft, the expansion draft you're doing um, has contracts being carried over. Um, that would be, oh gosh, that might be a question for, I mean, that still might be a financials question. That still might be a problem where the expansion teams that you're making don't have the fan loyalty or the fan base backing to actually be able to afford a budget because the budget of your team is based on your fan interest and your fan base size. Um, the owner doesn't have the ability to just create it willy-nilly based on his opinion. It has to have a backing of a fan base. So if you're picking cities that have absolutely no interest in baseball, if there's like no interest and there's no fan base, the budget's going to drop every single year and there's never going to be enough money to compete in a competitive environment. So at that point, you, that's where it gets a bit iffy. You might have to change some financial settings or have some kind of a, uh, we'll, we'll talk about that in a second because there's, there's a whole bunch of stuff you can do to kind of try to effectively fix that, but that requires some really big hands-on approaches uh, to do that. So let's keep going before I, I talk about everything else besides what we're trying to do. Uh, you could move the team too. That's true, that's true. Um, so we have the uh, overall rating based on all players, not positions. So a lot of people have asked me about this checkbox and what it means. So there's two different settings for this checkbox. One, of course, is where you don't have it applied. And we're going to talk about the other one first, and then we'll jump back and talk about when you don't have it applied. Because if you do have this applied, the overall ratings are based on every single player in the league and not split up into positions. Now, you might be thinking, that sounds kind of cool. That means you're basically saying that Mariano Rivera has to be compared to, like, Jacob deGrom, you know, or not Mariano Rivera, but maybe Araldis Chapman. Um, that could lower some people's, you know, overalls dependent upon, you know, whether or not they're on par with really good positional players. But here's the problem. Here's the problem with that. Catchers do not like that, okay? There is no catcher in the world that can compete with a top-tier shortstop, okay? The best catcher in the league right now is JT Real Muto. If you check that on, JT Real Muto goes from a five-star catcher to like three and a half stars because he does not compare well when you compare JT Real Muto, the best catcher, to like Francisco Lindor, the best shortstop, and Javi Baez, the best. Well, he's technically a shortstop too, but maybe you play him in second base and he's good there. But, you know, Freddie Freeman and um, JT Real Muto are not comparable. They're just not. We've tried to balance catchers out so that way they're not completely, you know, destroyed on their overall ratings if you try to compare them to everybody else. But there are not very many good, you know, amazing gold glove and amazing silver slugger. I mean, sure, there's silver sluggers, but, you know, like home run, just like 40... We don't have Mike Piazza or Ivan Rodriguez anymore, guys, okay? We have JT Real Muto. We have Gary Sanchez. So we have some people who try to be the same, but catchers are not going to like you if you turn this on, okay? And relief pitchers are not going to like you if you turn this on. Yadier would have been really good if it was like two years ago, Yadier. Yadi would have been really good about two years ago. Now he's not hitting as well. Uh, he's still an amazing fielder. Outside of the fact that there's so much stickiness on his chest protector that balls stick to it. Yeah. Anywho. Um, yes, if you want to have that turned on, it's cool to see what it will do to the overall ratings of players 
then it streamlines everybody into one big group and suddenly you have your top top tier players so here's a better way of, of explaining that if you are doing a fantasy draft after starting up an MLB league. You start up an MLB league and you want to be able to do a fantasy draft and you notice that Aroldis Chapman is at the top of the list of the five-star relief pitcher. And then there's this guy out of Pittsburgh, a relief pitcher, who's second on the list, five stars. And then you see JT Real Muto, five stars. And then you see, you know, Mike Trout, five stars, of course. And you're like, okay, hold on. Those three do not compare to Mike Trout. That overall rating is not correct. You know, you, you look at it and you're like, that does not make any sense. There's no way that you could conceivably tell me that those three players are five stars and comparable to five star Mike Trout. There's no way you can do that. So this is if you want to be able to do something kind of like that. This would then change the ratings of those, uh, the overalls overall ratings of those players to be against Mike Trout, not against just their position. However, again, if you do it that way, suddenly the catchers are, you know, four stars or below. Relief pitchers have a couple of five stars, maybe. Um, probably more four and a half stars, and then they drop as well. So you got to be careful when you turn that on. But then you also need to understand why we have that as an option. So understanding what that does is important. If you guys have any questions about that, please let me know because that one is the one that trips up a lot of people. Um, they have questions about the overall ratings, and then they send me a screenshot, and I see that turned on, and I'm like, yep, that's your problem. Or it's turned off, and I'm like, yep, that's your problem because the relief pitchers are – high quality because you don't have that turned on and they're basing themselves off of every other relief pitcher and not off of all of the top players. Um, for me, the top players are always one or two position players and ace and then 15. Yeah, that's always what happens, I rock this, is that basically if you turn this off, there's going to be a ton of five-star relief pitchers because – of the fact that there are a lot of top-tier relief pitchers. That's just how the leagues are right now. We have become such a bullpen-focused baseball uh, world in general that there are tons of five-star relief pitchers because the stuff is good and the control is decent and the movement's amazing and they throw they throw the ball, you know, 98 miles an hour. I mean, how would we not rate them really, really good if, you know if they weren't being compared to starting pitchers, hitters, you know, Francisco Lindor, Mike Trout. If they were compared to other relief pitchers, they're definitely five stars. But if they're compared to all players, not probably going to be as many five stars if you want to be able to do that. Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You, I mean, well, technically, the contracts given to JT Real Muto are based off of his WAR, his ratings, and his um, and his statistics. So, unfortunately, you're not going to be able to really change the way that people are paid unless you change the way that um, uh, you could change a little bit of the financial settings, I guess, technically. But unfortunately, the overall ratings aren't really going to make a player ask for more money. It's going to be their statistics and how well they played in a season, which is why you can get somebody who underperforms for a season and then drops their demand for uh, an extension like $20 million if they're like a superstar and they have a really bad year. Now, technically, their overall ratings should drop in comparison because the statistics will show that they're not doing so well and everything goes down. But their money goes down because their statistics go down, not so much because their ratings go down. You can still have a person with pretty good ratings, but if they're not playing well, they know they're not going to get money on the free agency because their statistics aren't going to warrant it, and they'll ask for less. So JT Romuto, definitely worth paying the money. Um, but is he really worth paying the money when you can get Francisco Lindor for the same price? Absolutely not. So that's where the overall ratings can be a little tricky when you're like, oh, wow, someone will trade me a five-star relief pitcher. Yeah, but that five-star relief pitcher is only worth, like, maybe one war. You're trading them a two-war player who's a three-overall player, three potential. That's a bad trade. Um, so there's some ways that it can get really, really wonky. That's true. That's true. <laughs> 
<laughs> that is actually very true. Yeah, they know it, but they just don't want to believe it. That, that that's true. Okay, all right. We finally got a <laughs> we got a section done, guys. Yay! All right. Moving on, we'll do uh, coaching staff studies and face gen studies, and then I'm gonna get some water real fast, and we'll keep going. So, coaching staff settings. This is if you wanted to be able to turn on or off the coaching system. This is for development. This is gonna be for keeping players' morale happy and whether or not they develop quicker or develop slower. This is gonna basically be all of the time and effort that you put into signing good coaching staffs. If you don't wanna worry about that, turn it off. You don't have to have it on. Um, let's just say that if you don't have it on, I, I think I, I think you uh, I think you're playing the game wrong personally. But that's just my opinion. So you can do whatever you want. All right. Just know that I'm judging you. Wait, what? No, I'm, I'm just kidding. Anywho, enable owner goals. That is the next one on the list. If you wanted to be able to turn those on or off, you can absolutely do that. If your owner is giving you some ridiculous kind of a goal, I think I actually have a meme at the beginning of the game or the stream here that had something about an owner's goal for like signing like a 38 year old veteran to like an extension. And it's like, no, I'm not doing that. Um, so if the owner's goals are just not something you want to worry about, you can always turn those off right here in the settings before you even begin the game. Face gen settings. These are so good for your game, but there are a couple settings we need to talk about. So you can change who gets face gens. I can't develop any bad players with good coaches. Um, oh, you totally can. You totally can. I've had a few players that fizzled out and I had really good coaching staffs, um, but you're gonna get less and less of those fizzling players if you have a good coaching staff. If you have good coaches in the minors who actually are good at developing kids and you have a decent amount of budgeted player development, um, it's more so about preventing drop-off players. It, it isn't, uh, I know a lot of people are like, oh, I want the next Paul Goldschmidt who gets drafted you know, in the 20th round and then suddenly turns into this amazing player. You know, Arenado is the same way where it's like you know, middle of the road draftee who suddenly turns into a five-star potential player. Um, sure, you can try to go for those, uh, but to be more honest, you're gonna get good coaches to prevent your really good top tier first round, second round, third round prospects from falling apart. Yes, the next Tom Brady. That's a good example for football fans out there. Um, you're going to be getting a lot of good coaches and development uh, to be able to keep your players from falling off. Uh, I recommend good coaches and minors. Absolutely. In fact, there's a Reddit thread where somebody said that having good coaching staff in your minors is actually a major cheat in the game because you can beat the entire game if you just put the best coaches in your minor league system because that's the best way to cheat the game and win. All right, so you've heard it here first, folks. If you want to win this game, no, I'm just kidding. If you want to assist your chances of winning and being able to perform well, make sure that good coaches in your minors that pair up well with your prospects, make sure that's your number one priority. That will increase your prospects' development and their play so much. It will cost you hundreds of thousands of dollars but technically, if those hundreds of thousands of dollars for the coaches that go into those really low-end systems means that the multi-million dollar prospect you're trying to develop you know, becomes what he's supposed to become, it's worth it. For the budgets, you don't have to go overboard on the budgets. You really don't have to go very overboard on the budget. Just don't kill your, your development budget. I know a lot of people are like, I don't see any development budget effects, so I'm just going to turn it off. Not that I'm trying to mock them. But at the same time, you need some money in your budgeting development, you know, inside of your de development budget. Don't make that zero. Make it some amount so that way you're not having issues with that down the road. All right? Capiche? Capiche. All right. Player face gen. So let's talk about that for a quick second, and then we'll take a quick little five-minute break, uh, and then we'll come back and take a second, second half whack at the rest of this stuff. I need a Tony La Russa and Dusty Baker in the minors. I got it. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you, you kind of do. You, you really need the people that would have been Tony La Russa and Dusty Baker. Um, and then technically, you can bring those guys up. You can, you can promote those managers and those pitching coaches and those hitting coaches as they go up through the system, as the prospects continue to climb. You can actually bring them up with you if you want to and they can continue to develop that player over and over again. So 
that's where you get these like really cool stories about you know players that had a minor league coach that came up with them through the system because they were such a good match and the team wanted them to keep developing um, and it worked out wonderfully you know and then they are you know throwing to them at the All Star you know at the home run derby or something like that I think a, cu- a couple of a uh, couple of baseball players have done that where they bring a minor league coach to pitch them because they were the one that taught them how to play baseball the right way and the way that made them so successful. Hey, Kanish, welcome to the channel, man. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hope your day has gone well so far. We're just running through all the settings for the uh, custom game stuff. In fact, speaking of which, let's jump right back into that really fast. So, face gens. We wanted to talk about face gen settings really quickly here. So, there are just basically some options for face gen. Now, you can always turn the face gen off if you go to the files and settings and you go to 3D and face gen. You can always turn the face gen off by disabling it. That will save you memory, okay? If you're having problems with memory on your system and the game's crashing because it doesn't have enough memory, turn off your face gen. That will help save a lot of memory space because all those face gens have to get loaded into the game. It takes up file space, it takes up memory space. Now, you can limit how many face gens are generated. If you only want it to be for the majors, you can absolutely do that. If you want it to be for all players in your entire leagues, all of your leagues get face gens, you can do that as well. That's really cool when you have um, like high school kids and you see their pictures, instead of just seeing like a profile page with no picture, it's cool to be able to see an actual face and you put a face to a name, that kind of stuff. For us visual learners like myself, it's important. Um, you can also do no fictional pictures. So if you don't want to turn it off in the uh, file settings, you could just turn it off for this one particular save. So if you don't want to have any pictures for players, you can just say no fictional pictures. And that'll save you a whole bunch of file space and memory. Um, you can also change when face gens are generated. We technically normally do it upon player creation. We generate a face gen, and um, it takes a long time, guys. If you have thousands of players to make a face gen for, it can take a while to be able to do all that. So some people do it on demand. So this is what happens when you like uh, when you go to the scores tab of your game, and it suddenly takes two. You know, it takes like thirty seconds as it has player names up at the top left. You know, and it's like generating face gens for a certain pitchers because you've never seen their face gen before, but it needs to load it up now. So that's what if it's going to do when it's on demand. Um, updating player face gen pictures. If this is going to be something, if you know, if the player becomes unhappy, if the player switches teams, if the player, you know, is you know uh, changed in some way, if it needs to be adjusted, if the face gen needs to be changed, you can have it set to always if needed. Otherwise, every single January first, you can set it up to do that, where every single player gets an updated face gen at that time. But that does mean that you might have a face gen with the wrong either smiley face, unhappy face, or maybe even the wrong logo on the hat if you haven't updated the face gen for that player and they've been traded. So something to think about there. Uh, You can also change the settings for the face gens for coaches. You can do it for all personnel or none. So if you wanted to not see any of the coaches' faces, that's fine. There aren't that many coaches in the league. This is kind of more like a, hey, you're just trying to get any amount of memory space and file space you can possibly get. Turn it off. It's not a problem. You're not going to worry about it. You're not even really going to see their faces. They're never displayed anywhere besides the coach's profile pages and your staff pages, which is your personnel page. So don't worry about that. You'll be just fine. Okay, gentlemen and ladies, I need to take like a two-minute break, get some water, and then we'll come back, finish the rest of all of these settings, which is going to be the player injuries, fatigues, and suspensions, uh, personality settings, player development settings, And then, of course, we go into the uh, stats settings, evaluations, trading, auto-saving, and log settings. We'll we'll come back, go through all of that really fast. And then at this point, I'm probably going to have to save all of these tabs for next week because we have talked way too much about everything else. But I love doing that. I love being able to talk about the game. So give me two minutes, guys. We'll be right back, and um, we'll keep going on these settings.
not bump the microphone, please. Thank you. Sorry about that. I am back. I needed that. That water was good. All right. Let's finish this up, shall we? All right. Whew. Uh, am I going to be finishing up at three? Uh, I'm hoping to go just until the end of the hour. So hopefully another 30 minutes is what we're hoping to go for at this point. So my apologies about that break there, but I was feeling the need for some water as we had been going for an hour and 30 minutes nonstop. And um, we're going to finish up these settings uh, discussion really quickly, and then we'll close out the end of the day, close down this, uh, this class 103, and um, we'll come back with 104, which will be expanded settings for custom games next week. All right, so... Let's breeze through these so that way you guys can understand what everything does. So player, injury, fatigue, and suspensions, very easy to understand. Basically, you can turn on or off injuries, suspensions. You can also hide the injury ratings of players if you wanted to. Then it's just dependent upon what your information tells you about players and whether or not they are you know, going to be susceptible to injuries or not. You can also turn off, or not, not, not turn off, you can change how oft, excuse me, how often players get injured so if you want to have it be realistic to modern day 2020 kind of style you can do high now most people have it set to normal which is ootp classic and that's not even as often as we see in real life so if you're playing the game and you're thinking the injuries are already a bit too much and you're playing on classic don't try playing on high okay High means that you're going to be having a lot of, like, he sprained a wrist, he pulled a hamstring, he's going to be out for a couple of weeks, you know, just need some time off. You're going to get a lot of player development usage. You're going to need a lot of depth charts to be able to make this work. Uh, if you want to have less of a challenge, go down to, like, low or very low. Um, extremely low, I've never even tried extremely low, to be honest. I don't even know if that's a new setting or not. I think it's new. I've never seen that before in my life. Um, but if you want to have less of a challenge, more of a beginner's first time, go with something a little bit on the lower end of the injury settings, just so that way you're not going to be penalized by having a whole bunch of players get added to the injury list as you go through your first season. Also, you can have the injuries delayed in terms of their diagnosis. If someone has like a pain in their elbow, but they don't know what's happening, it could take a day or two before you find out, yep, they need Tommy John surgery. It's a strained, strained elbow. Um, you know, or a pulled elbow, you know, they, they, they tore the elbow and they're going to be gone for a while. So you can have it set to occasionally where that'll happen or never. If you'd prefer to know exactly what happens immediately after an injury, you can have it set to never. And then the injuries will show you exactly what they are immediately after you end the game or as soon as you're alerted to that injury, it will tell you what has happened. All right. There's also something in here that not a lot of people know about, and that's position player fatigue and this is a cool one that i always love to fiddle around with because i always set this to high personally i have this to high all the time um basically pitchers have already a couple different places that you can edit their fatigue and how quickly they fatigue as a pitcher um you have uh pitcher stamina which is one of them and then you also have where is it Relief pitcher stamina and pitcher stamina for generated pitchers and players. And then I believe there's also the hooks are also one. And then I think that might be it. I thought there was one more someplace else. But there are ways you can edit the pitchers individually for their stamina. But people had asked a while back about positional players like catchers and shortstops and outfielders. They, they fatigue occasionally. You need to give them a day off, right? So this is a setting where you can actually change how quickly positional players tire and fatigue and need to get a day off. So if you want your league to have a lot of bench players playing and you want to be able to have, you know, people have to learn multiple positions and there's going to be a lot of replacements, set it on high. Uh, average is pretty good. You're still, you're still going to see a lot of, you know, days off for some players who are, you know, not playing every single day. But for some people who play every single day, they'll never get a day off on average. You know, like a Freddie Freeman won't get a day off, probably. Uh, but if you set it to high, there's a good chance that Freddie Freeman's going to get one or two days off every single month. So if you want to, you can change that anywhere from none, they don't get any fatigue, to high. And um, that's all dependent upon your opinion, 
what you'd like to do with that and what that means for you. All right, suspensions. Again, you can turn them off, turn them on, and then you can change how frequently they happen. This doesn't change what the suspension is about, so you can't discern if this is going to be just a fighting suspension or a PED suspension. Um, but from what I understand, I think PED suspensions are very, very rare, and this is going to be more so for fighting suspensions. Um, but this could just basically affect all suspensions happening in general. Does fatigue affect possible injuries? Uh, no. No. F uh, injuries are developed by the amount of innings a player plays, how their, how their um, injury proneness is already affecting them. So it's a combination of a couple different things that result in the chance of an injury, and then it's just randomness. It's just, do, do they get an injury? Maybe they don't. Um, but as you continue to use a person day after day after day, that chance continues to grow and build up depending upon their injury proneness. So the fatigue rating won't affect that. Uh, the fatigue rating is actually going to help that because if they fatigue faster, they get days off more often, which means they they help quell that potential injury potential versus playing every single day, which makes them have the most high chance you can possibly get to getting injured. So I don't want to say that's a great injury uh, re re uh, uh, deterrent, but it might be. Be. I'd have to test that. I'd have to test a league where we have it on like none and then have it on like high and see if the injuries can give us some information about that. But uh, I, I, I don't think so. Um, it shouldn't affect possible injuries. Okay. Player personality studies. Oh, we, went that, we, went, we went right through that section real fast. Uh, player personality studies are very easy to be able to go through. Basically, if you want to see the player personality ratings, if you want to use the player personality ratings, you can turn that on or off. This is going to be all of the, you know, disruptive type of chemistry, uh, leadership chemistry, you know, whether or not they're humble or they're selfish, if they're Yasuo Puig's, you know, if they're, you know, Madison Bumgarner's or they want to fight, you know, Amir Garrett kind of players. Not that Amir Garrett's a bad guy. Um, uh, but more so if you have somebody like... Um, Oh, who's the one guy? Milwaukee Brewers outfielder. I can see his face. <sighs> if you have a player who is a bad influence in your in your team clubhouse, in your chemistry, you could turn the player personality ratings off to be able to make sure that they don't affect your team. Um, if you're going to use the personality ratings, I highly recommend you show the player personality ratings on the profile pages. All right? Uh, Carlos Gomez, that's who I was thinking of, by the way. Um, I would recommend you always have those shown off. Oh, he brings level-headedness to the clubhouse. Really? Whoa! I mean, I've always thought that he was he was level-headed. He's just, he's, he's not even, like, disruptive, actually. So he's actually pretty good. Because, yeah, he wouldn't be disruptive. He's loyal. That's his problem. That might be the one thing that might get him, is that he's extremely loyal. So I'm assuming that he's probably level-headed, but high loyalty. He might be, um, he might have, like, issues with, uh, Amir 1 versus 25 gear. Yeah, that's basically what he is. Uh, loyal to the boys, consequences be damned. Exactly. That's exactly what he is, Magus. He is loyal to to literally his own fault, um, which I kind of like. I kind of like that. I, I like the idea that, you know, he's going to stand up for the team. He's going to stand up against, you know, anyone else who's going to put his team down or his players, his, his you know, his, 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 uh, his companions down, you know, his, his uh, I can't remember the name now. Fellow ball players. Word for fellow ball players. Uh, not companions. I played baseball. I should know this. Anywho, uh, the word I'm looking for is like fellow ball players. But anywho, 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 anywho. So you can use the player personality ratings if you'd like to, or you can turn them off if you'd prefer not to have those be an influence on your game. Um, same thing with the morale system. So as those personality ratings become an issue, they can affect your morale, which is basically the chemistry system again, too. So you can show and use the team chemistry system. So depending upon how the chemistry system works in your team, you can turn that on or off. 
and then that in turn affects your morale system, which can also be affected by winning, losing, and you know being signed to contracts, being shopped around. So your morale system is more than just your personality ratings. It's a combination of that with your chemistry and outside effects, external effects, such as being shopped around, um, you know, signing a nice new contract, uh, winning ball games, or losing ball games. And then, of course, you can also turn on or off the player nicknames. If you wanted to be able to have no nicknames and just have the player names, that's fine, too. I don't know who on earth would play without player nicknames, though. So, don't know who that is. All right, now we're getting into the good stuff. So, player development settings. Um, we're going to talk really quickly, but in depth, about the player development system, or settings. So, you can change how quickly batters age, pitchers age, batters develop, and pitchers develop. So if you wanted to make it so that way players play until they're like 45, you can change the aging speed down. And this is based on uh, 0 to 2.000. Um, so this is a rating system that's about basically it's, it, well, it's basically – 1 to 200 is basically what it is, but it's it's considered 1.00 factor. So there are factors, basically. But if you wanted to have aging be halved, you could do a 0.500. Now, this will make some players play until they're like 48. So you got to be careful with how low you turn this down or how high you turn it up. Because if you turn it up to like 2.0, you're probably going to get a lot of people retiring at like 32 and they will age super quickly. It'll be more like football at that point where people kind of retire after the age 30, which is silly to me. But anywho, um, if you want to change those, you absolutely can. For me personally, I almost always go with a 750 aging. 750 aging is a pretty good one for me. I feel like that gives players about three to five years of additional playing time. Um, they won't age as quickly. Um, I mean, somebody technically had Mike Trout go through and play in an independent league, and he played till he was 48 because he was just so good at baseball. But um, there is an effect about how good the league is. If they will bump out the player from the majors, they'll then retire but yes, you could see Mike Trout bombing Homer still at the age of 48. Although, technically, if you have Mike Trout playing at the age of 48, he's probably still batting 270, but he's probably not hitting home runs because power is almost always the first thing that goes from a baseball player. That power is going to drop so fast. So, technically, he probably would be hitting maybe a couple homers at the age of 48, maybe 10 at max, but he'd probably still be batting upwards of 300. So, it'd be pretty cool to see that. You do 0 0.200, 0 1.500? 1, 1. Woo! Wow. So that is something else you can do. You can change the development speed, and this is going to develop, basically it's going to change how quickly the people in your minor league system uh, develop over the course of their seasons. It's going to basically either double or it'll factorially you know, increase how quickly players are being developed and then they get to the big leagues faster. Um, if you do what Magus did where you have a 0.200 on those aging speeds, yeah, you can see people play upwards into their, you know, probably at least their early 40s, maybe even late 40s. Um, that's the uh, that's the old geezers league right there. Really? Only two players are actually still active in my league into their 40s. Okay, so that's where you could have a problem with too many players, Magus. If there are too many players, aging players will be kicked out very quickly. Um, if you don't have as many players in the league, teams will still play them. So there is a sense of, okay, you do need to have you know the limitation of players to be able to force those players to continue playing. Otherwise, the minute they get dropped down to AAA, they're just going to retire. If they don't get signed for a season to a major league team, they'll retire. Um, they'll drop out faster if there's too much competition in baseball. Like, if Jamie Moyer tried to pitch, if there was a Jamie-esque Moyer-type person, I mean, Bartolo Colon is a great example. Colon's not pitching, not because he doesn't pitch well. It's because there's too many young pitchers who are better than him already. 
at the age of like 22, 23, 24. And there's just no one who's going to need to take a shot on Bartolo Colon, even though I would love to see him keep playing. Absolutely would love to see, see Big Sexy keep playing. I mean, come on. Who wouldn't want to see Bartolo Colon keep pitching at the age of, what, what is he, 43 now? No, he's, he's like 44, 45, right? 46? <laughs> oh, good grief. Okay, who wouldn't want to see a 46-year-old still pitch in the big leagues? Come on. He's almost upwards of 50 for Pete's sake. I mean, come on, the fact that he pitched in a, co a couple years ago is just ridiculous. But, um, you know, it, it's hard to keep pitching when the age of baseball players is getting younger and younger every single year. In fact, I wonder if that's something I can look up. Average age of baseball players. So right now it's 28.9 years old. Um, it just dropped last year below 29 years old. And I don't know if that's the case for a lot of seasons. But I find that very telling when the average player, the average team in regards to anyone is getting younger and younger every single year. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. They're, dead, they're getting younger at a historical pace. Okay. Yeah, that, I thought they were. Uh, let's see. Drop to 28. Let's see. Now the average drop. Uh, fully a year. Sorry, I'm looking up other stuff now, but yeah, yeah, it, it's been getting younger and younger. So unfortunately, that just means that people are not going to be, you know, able to play when they get older and older. So it's hard. It's it's hard. <laughs> you can kill them a line drive. Uh, I'd hate to see that. That's true. That's true. I'm sorry, DA. I'm sorry. We keep chasing rabbit trails. You're right. You're right. Focus. 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 So anywho, yes, that's the uh, that's your player development settings. You can change those however you'd like to be able to do them, um, and just some examples of what those could look like. And then of course you can always just disable them if you'd like to. Um, you can disable development for uh, players that are actually in the league, and that's mostly for if you're just doing a historical playthrough, and you don't, or you're doing like a replay. Of a, of a league or you don't want anybody changing in the league and you want to be able to see what happens if you keep playing the league over and over again um that's why you would disable the player development so that way nobody changes everyone would just age but they would stay the same ratings they would all stay the same way and then disable development for draft eligible players excluding the feeder leagues um i'm actually not even sure what setting you would ever use for that Disable the development for draft eligible players. Oh, so like if you didn't want them to change over the course of a couple of seasons. I can see that being important if uh, if you find a player that's three years out for a draft, and by the time you get to that draft, he has dropped like 20 overall rating points. I can see that being a case right there. That's true. That's true. So that would be um, if you find somebody who is draft eligible a couple years down the road and you don't want them to change at all, you want them to stay exactly the way they are, you could disable development for your draft eligible players, excluding feeder leagues because those are actual leagues that you're developing players in to then become draft players. So good that it excludes those. All right. Retiring player settings. So when a player retires, you have the option to... Um, completely wipe the player from the face of your league if they didn't reach the majors. Now, anybody who reaches the majors automatically gets retired and their history and everything about them gets documented and saved. That takes up file space. Now, what you may not want to have is all of those minor league players who retire, who never make the big leagues, never made an influence in the big leagues, their statistics are also saved, their player stats are saved, everything is saved, unless you choose this if you choose this this means that anybody who never reaches the majors gets deleted from the game not just retired they get wiped there's no information about them you could still see their name but you won't be able to go to their profile page you won't have any information about them um outside of maybe like general general information about who they were as a player uh but you won't see anything else besides that all right Moving on, because that's a, that's a good one if you want to save file space and memory space, all right? Stats, settings. So, again, another thing for memory and file space, you can change these to be keeping all of the career left-to-right splits for players. This also regards to the 
um, career fielding stats for players and the career postseason stats for players. So you can choose to keep all of it, keep only the majors, or keep none of it. So, yeah, you can absolutely do that as well. Uh, deal with that however you'd like to deal with that, though, to be honest. So you can do that. Those, uh, those are important for some people. For other people, not that important to keep, like, fielding stats for their careers. Eh. Uh, you know, for some people that's important, for some people it's not. So make of that however you'd like to. All right. Your financial settings, this is just if you want to use the dollar and if you want to have it be the actual global coefficient, which is just basically meaning that the, uh, the, the rate is the same, 1.000. If, if you find out that your league has problems with money, we'll talk about that in the financial stream. If you're getting up into like the billions of dollars down the road, We'll talk about that later. I believe the global financial coefficient will affect that then. All right. Player evaluation AI settings. We're almost done, guys. Almost done. And then we'll answer a couple questions for people who I know are waiting for answers, and then we'll end the stream. Player evaluation AI settings. This is how it's going to evaluate the rate, the, uh, the, 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 the quality and how well a AI evaluates and values a player. So... If you find that the game really has some wonky opinions about certain players, it might be these settings. These settings might be a little bit off. Some people, you know, promise, I don't, I don't want to say, well, they swear. They swear that, you know, 30, 30, you know, certain settings, 25, 25, 25, 25 is good. I know some people do 30, 50, 15, 5. I know that for me, I normally do 15, uh, 50, 30. 15, 5, that's what I personally like to do. Um, that's really good if you have uh, a lot of emphasis on making sure the ratings are important. That's small ball approach. Um, or no, 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 that's old school approach, technically. Um, small ball and uh, money ball approach would be more of a 30, 50, 15, 5. Uh, being able to see a player based upon their current year stats weight. So all of these four different areas cover about um, different, well, they cover different percentages, depending upon what you enter, about how well the game evaluates players. And this is going to affect their overall ratings. So if you want their overall ratings to be mostly affected by the rating of a player, basically how well they you know, hit and pitch, how good their contact, gap power, power, you know, their stuff, their control, their movement, their stamina, all of those will affect the overall rating, and those are all part of your ratings weight. So if you want most of your overall ratings to be based off of the actual ratings of the player, put that higher. If you want it to be mostly based off of the current year stats, the previous year stats, or even two years ago statistics, you can set those up to be more of a bigger chunk of that evaluation, and the overall ratings will be adjusted to reflect that as well. So... Try to kind of fiddle around with this as much as you want to. Um, get a comfortable amount or numbering system that you like, and you can always play around with it. Sorry, my apologies about that. I keep hitting the microphone. But play around with that because nothing beats trying it out yourself. Um, you can listen to people who say that they, you know, they know the perfect number. It's this, 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 and this. I'll give you different numbers. You know, the next person who talks to you is going to give you different numbers. Everybody has a personal sweet spot that's just perfect for them. Um, and for me, it's been changing over the past couple of years. Every single time a new version of O2 comes out, it becomes more and more accurate, and it becomes better and better, in, in my opinion, it does at least. And I keep going more and more into ratings weight and less and less into current year statistics because I always used to be a big 30, 50, 15, 5 person. Now I'm swapping it around. I'm doing 50, 30, 15, 5. So... So it depends. Depends on what your style is and what you'd like to do. Ah, good segue there, George. So let's talk about um, trading settings. So George had a question there. He basically says, the AI keeps trying to give me overpriced aging veterans for my top prospects unless I put them untouchable. That happens a lot, George. Um, that's normally because that is always the first thing the AI tries to get rid of, overpriced veterans. They will try to throw those on to anybody they can possibly get their hands on who will take them because the money, it's always the money. That's why a lot of people will message me and be like, how come I can get a Chapman for like a bench player? 
That's because the Yankees don't want to pay a closer or a relief pitcher $12 million when they can get another five-star relief pitcher who only costs them a million. Um, the, the payments that are currently up right now for closers is so high. And unfortunately, because of the increase of bullpen requirements for major league ball clubs, relief pitchers are being, in my opinion, overpaid. Um, great example is Wade Davis and Craig Kimbrell. Um, the minute that they have any issues being able to keep their dominance as a closer, their value drops. And now nobody wants them because the minute that they show any signs of weakness, everybody scatters, you know, like like rats in a, in a, in a sinking ship. They're just gone. No one wants the person anymore. It's just you're on your own. So you got to be careful, especially with those aging veterans, because the minute that the value drops, they drop hard. And the game is not forgiving. If you sign somebody to a long year deal and by the end of it, they're like a one star overall player nobody's gonna pick him up we have that issue in our riches red machine uh with iglesias uh Raysel iglesias he's only 30 he's not even a veteran but he's being paid nine million dollars and he's only a two and a half star relief pitcher nobody wants him because he's costs too much money and they can easily get a two and a half star pitcher from their triple a system for free and they're not going to pay anything to pick up even somebody who has the stuff that Reyes de la Iglesias has. So good example right there about why the teams are going to try to trade you aging veterans. So <clears throat> how to counteract that is your trading settings. You can change how easy and hard um, that trading ability is for the AI. So if you want it to be super duper hard for you and the AI to make a deal and get on the same page, you can set it to be very hard. Now, a lot of people go with hard just because on average it is somewhat, I'm, I'm gonna say it's somewhat easy to abuse the trading system in OTP. Um, it's really easy if you have trading draft picks turned on. I, I love adding draft picks as a tradable option, but man, oh man, can you get away with a lot of stuff with uh, with that turned on. Um, it's hard in average. I, I find it to be somewhat hard in average. After you've played the game for as many years as I've played it for, you start to notice ways to get away with stuff. Um, um, but, um, yeah, I still find it to be good to play on average. I think hard, if, if you're a veteran player of OTP, play on hard. <clears throat> play on hard. You can do hard. Hard's not going to be the end-all result. That'll make it very realistic. You'll you'll get much more, you'll get much more what you would have assumed would be the result for a trade versus the oh wow they would take that deal in a heartbeat. Okay, uh, I guess I'll squeeze more out of them instead. Um, you know, add on some extra retainment of the contracts. You know, uh, versus real life where they would never accept that kind of a deal. Um, and then of course you can also change the trading preference. So if you wanted them to highly favor veterans or highly favor prospects, you can change that. So if you're getting a lot of offers for your prospects for like aging veterans that aren't that good, George, this is for you right here, basically. Change it so that way it favors prospects, and then they will, they will favor your prospects more, and they will give you more for your prospect. All right? If you have it highly favoring veterans, that increases the veteran's value. If you have it favoring prospects, it increases the prospect's value. And I almost always go at least favor prospects, maybe even heavily favor prospects, because you can get some prospects for pretty much nothing in the game. I find that on neutral, it's not bad for like top 100 prospects. They ask for a lot for those, but you can get anybody outside of the top 100 prospects list pretty cheaply and it's not that hard to do. So probably always go with at least favor prospects, just in case. Lineups. You can change the lineup selection if you want to. Um, I thought it was the opposite for that setting. Um, no, I think that's correct. I, I don't think I've got that backwards. Now you're making me think about it, though. Heavily favor prospects means that they will put more value into prospects. If you want to get a prospect of theirs, you have to pay through the... Through the, through the roof to get one 
Um, and if you offer a prospect, they will favor it much better than if you try to offer them a veteran when you have heavily favored prospects turned on. Um, all right, lineup selection. Lineup selection is very easy. If you want it to be traditional, you know, one through eight, you know, the same players against any type of pitcher, or if you want to be saber matri sabermetric. Uh, lefties and righties have different lineups. People maybe throw batters into the nine spot. You know, this is the this is the unconventional style of lineups. If you want the AI to be able to do traditional or sabermetric, you can do that. All right. Last section before we answer some questions and end the stream. Let me get some more water before I do this. I'm going to run out of breath here in a second. Whew. All right, let's do this. So we've talked a little bit about autosave and the log settings before. Let's just run through them really quickly so that way everyone remembers what these are. This is basically a bunch of saving techniques. We talked about it already in the stream, actually. Depending upon what you set these at, this is how much data is going to be written and collected for your save, for your entire save in general. Um, it's going to create box scores, game recaps, WPA graphs, which, is, which are those winning percentage graphs you see on the box score screens. Um, you can delay the generation of those WPA graphs, so it's not generating one for every single game if you want to. Um, uh, if you wanted to have those delayed, you can delay them. Uh, it does require them to have replays saved so it can recalculate those WPAs. But if you wanted to not have a bunch of WPA graphs being created for every single game, this would only then create the WPA graphs when you went to the game to view it. Uh, you can save the game logs. You can save the replays. And again, all of these are all of these options right here. You can save the replays, game logs, box scores from all leagues, all major leagues, human leagues, human organizations, or human teams. And that's five very distinct differences. All leagues is everybody. Everybody, everything. All major leagues, just the major leagues. No minors, no feeders, no winter leagues, no tournaments, no uh, independent leagues, international leagues, nothing but just the major leagues. Human leagues. So this is wherever your player, wherever your human manager is managing. It will save any and all of those leagues that you're in. So if you are involved in a major league, it will save all the major leagues and the minors associated with that. It will not save independent leagues you're not a part of. It will not save the winter leagues unless you're actively managing one of those, which I don't know if you can do that while at the same time managing it. I don't think you can. Um, it will save some things that you are a part of, but nothing else. Human organizations. This will only do the teams that are inside of your organization. So if you wanted to get just what your team plays against, and not just your majors, but your minors included, you can pick human organizations. That's normally what I pick if I'm trying to do a somewhat condensed save file. I'll do human organizations, and that will give me all of my minors and my majors and just do those. It won't do random teams playing against each other because I don't care about those teams. I care about my teams. And then, of course, you can do human teams. Uh, if you wanted it to be just teams that you directly control. Actually, that kind of sounds like human organizations. Wait, human teams. Human teams are those organizations. I'm not going to remember what the difference is between those two. Yeah. Da, 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 da. Gotta remember what the differences are between human teams and human organizations. Organizations should be. Oh, okay. So that's if. Um, I think the difference between that is if you're like the manager of the major league team. Um, if you're the manager of a major league team, you're just going to get the majors if you're doing human teams. If you're the manager of the majors and you do human organizations it will still do all of the levels including your major league team um that's more so for managers not so much for gms gms are controlling everything so they would get the same results i think for teams and organizations i think they'll get the same results if you're a gm but if you're a manager and you're only managing AAA, and you want the majors saved as well you could do human organization and it would do all of the org instead of just your team. I think that's what it's talking about for that. Anywho, you can do that for all of these. 
all these different settings. And then of course you can do the keeping of the news logs, the injury logs, and the transaction logs, depending upon how many years you'd like to do. Two, 10, or all of it, or none of it. You can do either of those four settings. And again, those are all about increasing your speed of your simulation. We talked about that in our last, simu our last uh, episode, talking about size, speed, and styles. Um, and uh, being able to change those will affect directly affect your speed and how big your league gets. All right. I think we talked about everything we needed to for right now, at least. Um, let me cover the couple of questions we had from people in the chat. All right. So DA had a question about creating he created a north american baseball structure with promotion relegation within the u.s and canada mexico as standalone leagues nicely done that's a great way of doing it i wonder if i can get this picture up here real fast i think i can put this on the screen without having any problems yeah so he did this he did a uh, uh, U.S. Premier League, Mexican Baseball League, uh, U.S. League One, which I'm guessing is your promotion, U.S. League Two, which is, again, promotions, relegations, and then a Canadian Baseball League. Awesome. I love that. Um, his question was, however, they are all sharing the same draft pool for the inaugural draft, resulting in, for example, Mexican teams having more U.S. Canadian players than Mexican players which wasn't my intention from the beginning. Yes, if they're all MLB and they don't have restrictions applied to them, they will all feed off of the same uh, in inaugural draft list. So we need to be able to put restrictions at least at the beginning. And I would assume probably for the rest of your time frame, we need to have those restrictions turned on. So that way there is not going to be that problem. Uh, is there a way to avoid the uh, this other than not having an inaugural draft. So, yes, we definitely need to do a restriction on your league settings. So this is what we would have, would have covered if I had gotten through stuff faster. But if you go to your rules inside of league settings, and I hope DA is here for this, um, you're going to need to go down to your foreign players on active roster limit and set it to no foreigners allowed. If you do that those teams will not be allowed to have anybody on their team that is foreign depending upon either the team nationality or the league nationality. So you could even have all three of those leagues together and then base the limit on the team nationality instead of on the league nationality. So for like our example, our example here is the Americas sub league it has teams from usa canada and mexico kind of like what you just did um and what you can do is for our league if i did league nationality well the league nationality is american so the mexican teams would only be able to draft americans the canadian teams would only be draft american i could set it to none unknown and then it would be available to anybody but um, the team nationality is set already with Mexico, Canada, and the United States. So inside of your Ross, uh, inside of your rule setting, change that. For you, you can do league nationality because you've separated them into separate leagues, and that's fine. That that works perfectly fine. Um, but if you had them all in the same league, just for anybody else curious, change that to team nationality, and then every single team is restricted to the nationality they are set as so for uda just do league nationality um you're gonna need to do that for every single one of your leagues though so you're gonna need to do that for the mexican league you're gonna need to do that for the uh canadian baseball league and the uh u.s premier leagues all of them are gonna need to have that setting turned on and changed that way i ordered them on the on that picture by reputation by the way oh nice so you had the U, the USPL. I'm glad you didn't call it the USP uh, or the UPS. Um, I would need that for the inaugural draft and then turn it off, I think. You can do it that way, yes. Uh, that would at least start the teams with the nationalities that I kind of would expect them to come into the leagues with, which is local homegrown teams. 
So you could turn that on for the inaugural draft. Make sure that players go to the right places. If they don't, wipe everybody from the league. Start it again. Not from scratch, but just start it again. Create uh, fictional players. There's, there's two ways you could do that. Um, one, do the draft. Make sure it works. Make sure that the nationalities stick, that uh, you know the Mexican teams have Mexican players, and then just turn it off, and you'll be fine. Now, eventually down the road, they would all get mixed again, unfortunately, because over time they'll sign players, trade players, stuff will happen. Um, I don't know if you're having individual first-year player drafts from those high schools. If you're doing that, great on you. That's fantastic. Um, but if they're having the ability to trade between leagues or free agency can happen, you will start to see some people leaving uh, certain leagues to go play in the topper leagues. So, like, the Canadian players will want to go play in the U.S. Premier League if they can because of the reputation, um, unless you keep that restriction turned on. Um, but the alternative way, if the inaugural draft does not work, if it doesn't work, and even with the restrictions, it somehow messes up, what you can do is keep that restriction turned on and just have them autofill. Uh, that would be on the side of the functions uh, tab, which would, require, would, which would require starting up my game, unfortunately. I haven't gotten that far. But if you go to the functions under league settings, it would have been next to league. Uh, you can have the computer autofill the teams. And if there are restrictions turned on, it will create the players that are only allowed to play in that league. Uh, you could also go to your player origin section underneath of, underneath of players tab. If it's set up with other nationalities being an option, you may turn those off. And you can do that by hitting functions and then uh, reset 100% nation to match 100% in total. Um, it'll round the nation percentage to match 100% in total. And then what you can even do is you can match the team nation distribution so but whether or not your nation is set up for the league um, it will change it to match that 100 percent so for example if i change this back to an america only league the nationality of the league was america i could say uh reach that to match team nation distribution or no that's actually if no that's dependent upon the team nations that are in your league my apologies um there is a way to be able to do it where i think it's based off of the league nationality but uh, depending upon the teams you have, you can also do it that way where it then matches the distribution of teams in terms of their nationality, which would actually be better for our league right here since that will make it perfectly aligned with how many teams are in, in our league. Um, but you can also just simply make it, you can also just manually change it to 100% if you wanted to as well. That's just as fast, just as fast to do it that way. Uh, but you may want to check that to make sure that it actually is set up to be just the nationality that those leagues are assigned for. Otherwise, you will get players created that uh, that are not supposed to be in there. Good, you did that already. Awesome, 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 awesome. Okay, I think that answers your question. I think that's going to be uh, that question completely answered at this point. Who else had a question? I know there was one other question. Um... I can't remember who it was, though. Da, da, da. Let's see. Uh, I don't remember who the other person who asked the question was. And if I can't remember, unfortunately, I will, I will think about doing that later. Da, 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 da. That's, that's been done. That's been done. That's been done. Answered, answered, answered. Answered, answered, answered. Answered, answered, answered. I think we're all finished. Oh, no. Uh, Mamba, E24 Mamba had a question. Oh, and more questions. Hold on. Let's see. Uh, is there a way to increase the average potential of drivable players? Yes, there is. Uh, if you go down to the traditional OTP player creation modifiers... Um, you can change these. You can also change the Saber metric player creation modifiers. If you make those higher than 1.000, that will make players have influx ratings when they are created. So as you encounter first-year player drafts, um, international creations, anything else that revolves around this one league that you're selected on, um, you can change these to make them higher, and that will increase 
the potential of draftable players. Yes. How to fill minors rosters? One expect uh, one to expand. Are you wanting to expand team? Um, there is a way to also do that for the minors uh, battle. If you go to the minor leagues, they'll also get functions um, that you can then autofill those teams as well. If you need to generate a bunch of players to fill up teams, that's easy. Um, just go to league settings. Go to the the league you want because the league will be in the top right corner. Hold on, let me go ahead and load up a league really fast so I can show you guys what that means, what that looks like. Um, you can have the autofill happen for minors as well. Um, same way you can do that for majors. So if you go to game settings, league settings, go to, like, I don't have minors here, unfortunately. Wow, those all got changed. Those are all random. But you can go to your minor leagues. They'll be on this list here. And then you can fill teams with fictional players. And that will base the fictional players off of your players' settings, too. So but depending upon the nationality that you have for the default player origin, what their saber metrics are going to look like, what their player creation modifiers look like, it will create players depending upon all of these settings right here. So you can do that for your minors. Actually, minors won't have some of these player creation modifiers. The major league will have that player creation modifier, if I remember correctly. So you may only have some little things you can edit for that in the minor leagues, but it will utilize the major leagues player creation modifiers to affect the minor leagues. I think that's the corrected answer for that. And then let me get back to, uh, to Mamba's question really fast. He had a question regarding player generation for my fictional world league. Is it possible to make it so non-USA players don't have colleges or high school based in the U.S.? Um, are you... In referencing, in regards to that, let me see if I can copy this real fast before I lose this. I'm just going to paste this really fast so I've got this pasted on my system so I can scroll past it and not have to worry about that. Let's see. Um, oh, DA has a follow-up question. Hold on. Uh, I have a few players created from Puerto Rico, Dominican Republic, etc. I assume they will be prevented from being drafted by any team. That is correct, DA. If they are not... Uh, if they don't have a national team to play on and there are restrictions to prevent anybody who is foreign from playing on those three different leagues, they will not play anywhere. They will be a free agent for life. Every time I expand has no rosters. Oh, if you're expanding, um, I mean, yeah, if you're expanding, you do need to have enough players in the free agency system and in player creation to be able to, to get that all sort it out and make sure that those all get filled correctly because yeah there's a lot of times where i've done expansions and then the teams have no minors filled they've just been able to fill up the majors in triple a um and most of the time i have to go in and i just say auto fill for every single minor league just to fill them up because there's unless you're going to literally have thousands of people in your free agency system waiting for the next expansion it's not possible in real life, it's possible because we have a whole bunch of independent leagues and a lot of NCAA players who don't make it to the big leagues. There's a lot of people who are um, who are like you know free agents, um, and it's easy in real life to be able to do expansions, but not so easy to do that in OTP because we don't have all the players involved that are in real life. So expansions in real life very easy. In OTP, not so easy. Okay, let me try to answer uh, Mamba's question here really fast. So he had a question regarding player generation for my fictional world league. I know I'm saying this again. Possible to make it so non-USA players don't have colleges or high school based in the U.S. Um, you could change. I'm guessing that's the auto-generated players um, that Mamba's talking about for that. He's, he's probably having a draft where these players are Puerto Rican uh, you know, Dominican Republican or international, basically. And I'm assuming that they have USA-based colleges, high schools, because that's what's in our system right now. You may need to change, and I don't know how to make that... Uh, I actually don't know how to do that correctly, because I don't think there's any way you can tie nationalities to the high school and college listed teams i know that we have a database of college and high school teams that got added to 21 because we had a whole bunch of changes to our draft system um but you're correct i don't know if there's any way to make it so that way foreign players 
don't still have those colleges listed as their colleges of choice. Um, I'd have to ask a dev about that, unfortunately. That would be a dev question to see if it's possible to, uh, to make it so that way foreign international players use actual foreign international high schools and colleges because, unfortunately, I think that's limited by the um, – I think that's limited by our listing. Puerto Rican players has to go on draft in real life because we are a U.S. territory. Yes, yes, that is how it works in real life. But if it's like, say, a Japanese player, I think what he's mentioning is that, you know, like he has a first-year player draft and there's a foreign Japanese player that's, you know, from Japan. But he went to high school in an American high school when he doesn't live in America, um, which is not possible. So the problem I think that he's facing is that the game is giving them auto-generated um, high school and college colleges um, listed, but that's not correct for international players. So I'd, I'll have to ask a dev if that's the case. There might be a setting for that, um, but I'd have to look that up because that is kind of a new area of 21 that we literally just made, which was the list of colleges that are now officially in the game um, that you can choose from. If you actually go to Explore World, you can see we have added a schools page. And I know we have nations, but again, I don't think we have anything. We have some Canadian. Do we have anything that's not American? Let me see if I can do nationality is not uh, United States. Or is it just America? Is it America? American. So if it's not American, we have Canadian. Oh, we do have some. Okay. Uh, da, 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 da. Let's see. Let's see. How many do we have for other? I got, I got one, one Puerto Rican. <laughs> Is that the only one we have for Puerto Rico? Uh, two. Two. Their, com their competition level is poor. You've got some that are from uh, Japan. Um... A lot that are from Japan. Okay, so we have one from the Virgin Islands, a lot that are from Japan. Looks like you've got about six that are from Puerto Rico. So that's a question for a dev, because those should be utilizing a couple of these foreign uh, ish, uh, uh, schools if the player comes from those schools. Um, but, but if it's someone who's like French, I don't see any French schools here. So if it's someone who doesn't actually have a, a school to match the nationality, that might be where it's tripping him up. Because if we don't have a school for it, I bet you it's just randomly picking a school to match. And that's all it's going to do. So regretfully, that might be the one limitation. I actually see a couple of really good. Wow. The Collegio Hector Udante. Udante? I'm guessing that's a college. That was a 10 frequency for that one right there. Anywho. I think that's going to answer the question for um, for that guy. Uh, I do believe that uh, that's a dev question. Um, I think there are some nation, uh, nations that might have enough information to do that for, but uh, depending upon what the international player's uh, ethnicity and nas uh, nation of birth was, it may not be one we actually have a school for. And Douglas has a 0, zero long latitude. Interesting. Anywho... Ladies and gentlemen, that's going to be it for the episode for today. If you missed any of these episodes, we always have been putting them up on YouTube, except for episode one, which we're going to be redoing. So hold out for that one, please. That might be coming next week. We'll see. We'll see about that one. Um, this might be the end of our 100 classes. I think we still – no, no, no. We still need to go through the rest of the, of the uh, settings tabs, and we'll consider that the end of our 100 series, and then we'll actually get into – creating and running custom leagues and how to do maintenance and longevity for those online for those for those leagues so thank you guys so much for watching thank you for coming in here and being able to just join me and uh asking questions as well i'm more than happy to answer those questions again my name is alex murray also known as az axel you guys can find me on the discord and on twitter and if you send in any support tickets, I'm probably the person you're going to get for that as well. Either way, this has been an absolute blast, guys. Thank you so much for joining me. Have a great rest of your guys' Saturdays. Go enjoy some 
quarantine stuff, whatever you guys are doing at this point with your lives. But uh, have a great rest of your Saturday, guys. I will see you all next week.